Hello again. We are Chris Lee and Chase Robinson, the Southeastern 16, talking Texas A&M. And when we want to talk the Aggies, we go to my friend Olin Buchanan of Tex Ags. They do a phenomenal job of covering A&M. Olin, thanks for joining us today. Hope you're well. I am doing great. Been doing really well ever since Saturday. <laughs> yeah, well, let me, let me tell you, um, it, uh, most other Saturdays, the Aggies would have been the talk of the SEC landscape and then and then Vanderbilt said, hold my beer. And then and then Arkansas said, let's let's hold the other beer. Hold if you my got enough hands here. <laughs> you hold my, I like it. But I mean, in, in all seriousness, you guys were the AM was super impressive in a win over Missouri. I mean, and, and if you just saw the score, you said, Did it go like the score suggested it went? Yes, it went exactly like the score suggested it went. And look, I, I didn't know who was going to win the game. I I picked Missouri thinking, you know, we, we just weren't sure what AM was yet, but holy smokes. Um AM showed an upside that, that had to scare the pants off the rest of the SEC Saturday. I don't know. Uh, look, Connor Wigman uh came back healthy and was the quarterback that we thought he would be. Um uh, he was hurt earlier this year and didn't look very good. He was awful against against Notre Dame and he'll tell you that. Um and it turns out you know, he had a sprained shoulder, um, sprained it against Notre Dame and AC joint, and then uh, thought he could play against McNeese and aggravated it. And so they had to go to the true, uh, the redshirt freshman quarterback from up there in Nashville, Marcel Reed, and he did a nice job and, you know, won three in a row. But people are saying, yeah, but who'd you beat? You beat Florida, you beat Arkansas, Bowling Green. And then they go out and play, you know, just the, the best, Probably the best game I've seen A&M, an a and team play since they upset Alabama uh, in 2021. Wow. I mean, they, they just played really good football. Um, uh, Connor Wigman, again, he, he was outstanding, 22. I mean, I'm sorry, 18 or 22. Leaving on Moss uh, has rushed for at least 90 yards now and in, in – uh, uh, four straight games, back-to-back career highs with 137 uh, uh, against Missouri. The uh, the defense got six sacks. They held Missouri to less than 100 yards rushing. It's the fourth consecutive game that A&M held its opponent to 100 yards rushing or less. So um, they still gave up a big play for a touchdown, which has been the uh, kind of the Achilles heel of this team. Um, but – you know, it was just one. So um, I, th- I think they're even making progress in that. And, you know, I think you want, you're seeing a good team that's getting better. And the question is how how much better are they going to get? Um, maybe it's not going to get much better than this. Maybe they're going to continue to make strides and then, um, you know, maybe sneak into the discussion for the playoff or maybe even get into the discussion to – uh, at least challenge for the SEC championship. I mean, when you win that game, uh, you, the way you did against Missouri, you just start saying all things are possible. Yeah. Not making any predictions, but when you look at what's happening in the SEC and as a, if A&M continues to climb and get better, you know, all things are possible. And the the way they dominated Saturday um, is that kind of what and you, and you look back to the Notre Dame game. Yes, they lost. That's their their one loss for the season. But when you look at the performance Saturday, is that kind of what you expected this year to look like for A and M, or is this something that is like, oh, this team is man, they're they're really coming along. Well, we expected. Uh, I think they're coming along. We expected. Um, like I said, Connor Wigman to have a good year because Connor, we've seen it from Connor. We've seen Connor play at a high level. What we had not seen is the way he played against Notre Dame. I had picked him to beat Notre Dame because, and Connor, Connor was one of the big reasons why I had picked him to uh, to beat Notre Dame, and, and he was abysmal. Um, but we expected that. We expected uh, the the defense to be able to to, to be strong. We expected that, you know, getting Nick Scorton in from Purdue, uh, Brian Kidd, who's has been everything that he he was uh it was said that he would be. Uh, but where AM has gotten better um by leaps and bounds is in the offensive line. The offensive line, let's face it, if you're grading if you were grading offensive lines last year, AM is lucky if they get a D. 
You know, I mean, they, they just weren't mm. good. And uh, now they're averaging over 200 yards rushing. I think they're second in the SEC in rushing offense. Um, and, they, and, they, and that's – I mean, yeah, they played McNeese, but they also played Notre Dame, and they played an Arkansas team that we just learned, hey, that defense must be pretty good uh, the mm -hmm. way they played Tennessee last week. And Missouri hadn't been bad. Um, mm -hmm. And even Bowling Green gave Penn State a hard time. So um, the offensive line, uh, I think they've given up uh, maybe seven sacks. So – from pass protection and run blocking, it is so much better than it was a year ago. I think you'd have to give them a solid B, which some places they might kind of frown at a B for your offensive. But when you when, when you are lucky to get a D and you're already up to a B, you know you can feel really good about the offensive line play. And I think the receivers is an area that was a big concern coming into this season, and they're starting to they're starting to come along. But before we continue, uh, let's tell you about our friends at Bet Online. If you want to bet on Max, those Arkansas Final Four National Championship odds this season, if you're calling the Hogs already, you can also call. Maybe not call. Maybe just you know type it up with your fingers or something like that. I don't, you can't really call anymore, I don't think. Um, no. But you can you can visit our friends at Bet Online, the world's most trusted betting platform, and your number one source for everything. Football and basketball, Max. We're going to add that in. Uh, every stat, uh, matchup, live odds during the games, uh, it's all there. If you know your stuff, you can also play that $200,000 mega contest where you pick five Ooh. games against the spread every week uh, for your chance at weekly prizes and a share of $200,000. Uh, when it's over, head to the online casino, play some blackjack or poker, over 150 slots games there as well. Head to their website today to get on the action. Bet online. The game starts here. Yeah, Olin, you, you hit on something on the schedule. I, I think they played a lot of quality teams. There, no, there's not been an Alabama or a Georgia or a Texas on there yet. But, I mean, Florida's a, a respectable team. Bowling Green is better than people know. We, we found out about Arkansas. We know Missouri didn't look great, but it's a, a good program. And, and I looked it up. Jeff Sagarin's got them the number 23 strength of schedule in the country. So it's not like they played a weak slate of teams on the whole. Uh, moving on to quarterbacks. You got a lot of you got maybe some teams in this league that don't know if they have a quarterback. A and M feels like it's got two at this point. I would imagine. Um, let, let's start with Connor Wegman. I, you said I think you said he got hurt during the Notre Dame game, game, or was it before? No, I think it was during. Um, okay. um, we don't know exactly when. I heard it was on a quarterback sneak, and they had a quarterback sneak in the first quarter uh, uh, early. And if that's when he got hurt, that would explain a lot but then i heard well no it was it was later than that so um uh all i know is look he had, he was he had a poor poor performance and, and again he acknowledged it he came out i'll give him this uh the monday after the game they do the press conference and you know sometimes you have to request guys to show up and sometimes even when you request they don't he volunteered and he showed up and said look i i was terrible he actually, I was terrible. It's the worst game I played. Uh, no excuse for it, and I'll get better. I told my teammates that I would take uh, the responsibility for it, and that'll never happen again. And, uh, uh, again, it was a head-scratcher because we've never seen I mean, I've seen him throw 400 for 400 yards and four – or 300 yards and four touchdowns against Ole Miss. Mm -hmm. And I saw him throw a couple touchdown passes, uh, only 150 yards, but – Moved the offense well against in a win over LSU uh, two years ago. That was a big upset. Um, I've just I, I saw him throw for three hundred something yards and a couple touchdowns against Miami. Uh, so I'd seen him be good against good teams. Um, so that was completely you know we're completely blindsided by that Notre Dame game and you know getting hurt. You know obviously that explains some of it. Doesn't explain it all. Yeah. But if who if if he is moving forward, who he was against Missouri, then uh, you know I think AM's going to be a tough team to beat. When it comes to the uh, the run game, that's something that I've been in, impressed with this year uh, for Texas A and M. You mentioned uh, Moss's name earlier; he's got six hundred nine yards on the year. Mari Daniels uh, and and Marcel Reed, who's coming at quarterback, has has huh? ran well. Uh, what do you make of the the run game? Is that something you see as as being a strength going into the season? And and and, and I know Ruben Owens was a tough loss, yeah. you know, in in the preseason. He he definitely would add to those numbers. But what do you like about this run game, and how will they fit in the rest of the year? 
Well, again, uh, coming into the season, I think it was a question mark because uh, we all know this, you know, what, what, football 101. Yeah, you can have great running backs, but if they're not getting blocking, they're only going to be, you know, they're, they're going to be limited in what they can do. And there was so much concern about the offensive line. Now, they made a lot of big changes, right? They changed their offensive line coach. Chase Basantes was a star guard in high school, and they started him as a true freshman in the SEC against, you know, grown men at tackle where he'd never played before. Uh, what could possibly go wrong? <laughs> you know, and, and then Reuben Fathery is back from injury. He's a right tackle. Um, um, Trey Zoon uh, is probably their best offensive lineman left tackle, and he he's finally healthy. He's had some injury issues. They brought in Amaj Reed Adams from Kansas to play guard. Uh Coley, and I still can't say his name, Faua, I don't know, he's from Utah, the center. So they brought in a lot of guys, and it's coming together. Um, And then we always knew Le'Veon was good, but I think he's taken his game to another level. Um, And uh, Amari Daniels is a nice change of pace. He's a more of a – whereas whereas Le'Veon runs with a lot of power, and we found out he was faster than we thought when he had that 75-yard run against uh, Missouri on the first play of the second half. So, but he still looked as more of a power back. Uh, and and uh, Amari would come in and give you, you know, some some lightning to the thunder as they as the old cliche goes. Uh, the loss of Reuben Owens was significant because, quite frankly, he was viewed as the. I think Le'Veon was going to start no matter what, but I think Le- uh, Ruben was looked at as a guy that could give you the, the the real the real big play threat at that position. And uh, but you know, they've uh, adjusted, and quite frankly, their uh, their running game has I would say right now has been has been better than anybody would would have projected. I want to ask you about their receiving room because I think going into the year, I think you just mentioned that was a question. And I looked at it and said, all right, they got a lot of guys. I don't know if they have a dude, and I don't think they got a Ryan Williams, but it feels like they got a they got a lot of parts and a lot of depth. I mean, you had Cyrus Allen that came in with a really productive year at Louisiana Tech. Jerry Barber was great at Troy. Uh, and I'm looking at their sheet. You got Noah Thomas leading him in receiving with 252. Allen is second. Jade Walker, who's talented with 131. Uh, you, you got Terry Bussey, who's super talented, um, yeah. I think, and explosive on that sheet. You got Moose Muhammad way down the list, um, which I don't know we would have expected. Where, where does this – I mean, is this a room where they've just got a lot of great options and, and they just all, it, you know, spin the wheel and it's your day? Or how does this go going forward? Well, it's coming together. So the situation was, look um, – Evan Stewart transferred to uh, Oregon, and Anaya Smith went into the NFL draft. He's with the Eagles now. And, you know, those were your two big play guys. Now, Noah Thomas has been a guy, he's, you know, 6'6 guy with good speed and great hands, and yet has never developed into, like, you know, a true number one type receiver. Um, And you're starting to wonder if he ever would. And we were even talking about it. before the game against uh, uh, Arkansas. You said, look, Arkansas's last in the SEC in pass defense. When is Noah going to take that step and go from being you know, a guy that has a lot of potential to a guy that gives you a lot of production? Well, he went out in that game, and I think he, you know, top of my head, he had six or seven catches for 100 yards, uh, would have had a 70-something yard touchdown pass and or catching uh, Marcel just barely missed him. So um, he's starting to to flourish. Um, hopefully, it's not a flash in the pan for the Aggies, but uh, he's. I think he's got like you know twelve, thirteen catches in the last three games, and he had five before that in the in the, in the previous three games. Um, Jabri Barber, they were really high on him in, in the spring. They said, "Look, this guy's going to make a huge difference," and then he. Uh, had a foot injury that they thought might keep him out for the entire year. And, uh, well, you know, he's a fast healer. And he hasn't been he hasn't been this guy that's come in and made huge big plays in terms of yardage. But, man, that guy will make a catch in traffic. Well, if you need on third down, uh, he had one against early against Missouri. It's third and eight, I think it was. 
and he catches a nine yard pass with a guy all over him. You know, he's just that kind of guy that uh, is making a big play. Um, Jade Walker is a guy when uh, when Evan Stewart got hurt last year, Walker came in, and he's not going to be that guy that you're going to look at and say, there's an all-conference type of guy, but he's probably the toughest guy among the receivers. And, you know, he had a, a, a big tough catch for 40 yards last week against Missouri, and he was well covered and just quite frankly out fought for the ball. So he's he gives you a toughness that we may not have seen from a receiver like that here. I mean, Christian Kirk did a really good job, yeah. obviously, and Josh Reynolds, but he gives me a toughness that kind of reminds he's not as good, don't get me wrong, but he reminds yeah. me of Mike Evans just in the just in the I'm a tougher guy than you, so I'm gonna go get the ball. Um uh but again, no stars. There's no star with the one guy that you thought has a chance to be a star is Moose. And quite frankly, there might have been some um I don't want to say this with finesse. Let's just say there might have been some issues with Moose that maybe he's, uh, let me say he may be, uh, have had some uh, issues adapting to the demands of a Mike Elko coaching staff. Fair. And they're not playing any games. So yeah. uh, I still think Moose can be a big factor for the AM this season. But what you're seeing is, a, a lot of good receivers, no great ones. Noah has a chance to be great. And right now in a three game stretch, he's, I'd say he's on the cusp of greatness, but um, I think we're still in a wait and see mode on, on uh, really that, that whole receiving core. But right now, yeah, you know, they're solid. Well, and, and look, we're, we're in the portal era where, you know, guys hadn't played together as much. And I think especially a receiving room and cohesiveness with a quarterback. And, hey, you've been, been two quarterbacks. So, right. I mean, it, it all makes sense to me that that it's that it's not come together in, in a way where, where we have clarity. But I think you got to be impressed with the pieces. Uh, the, the piece I want to ask you about, I want to ask you a couple things on defense before we close. Sure. I feel like I'm pretty locked into the SEC. Uh, was Was – Will Lee, was there as much hype on him coming in as there is now? I mean, you know, he's got a nickname. He's got a, a brand. He, we had the big thing with the, with the blanket. I, I want to know if that was was staged. I'm sure you saw the tweet. Uh, that, that felt like a motivational tactic from, yeah. from Eli Drinkwitz that, that might have backfired. But uh, tell, tell me more about that and about him. Well, he's a really good player at Kansas State. Um, and uh, he wasn't all-conference or anything like that. But I think it was – how much stock you want to put in the pro football focus. And I think, you know, they had ranked him as, you know, one of the top uh, quarterback prospects. Right. So yeah. look, Mike Elko got here, was evaluating his talent, said, we got problems in the secondary guys. So they went hard for, uh, for DBs in the, in the portal. And Will Lee was the best of about five that they brought in five or six uh, safeties and corners. They brought in, you know, Desmond Ricks from Alabama, um, uh, a safety from San Diego State, a safety from Central Michigan, a safety, you know. So um, Will Lee has been excellent. He's, he may lead, I think he leads the SEC and passes broken up. Um, he's got an interception uh, before this year. You didn't see many at, at AM. Now they've got about seven or eight, which is crazy here. Um, and and he's just he's just you know one they had a pick six against Georgia. Well, he deflected the ball on a slant, and Bryce yeah. Anderson caught the deflection, and returned it for a touchdown. That's just the kind of impact Will Lee has made. He's been a good tackler. So um, I might go all the way back. The best I may be ready to say he's the best corner that A and M has had. I think he's even better than Shazer Everett that went mm. that played for the. Uh, Washington team for a long time. I may go re be ready to say he's the best corner I've seen at AM since Sammy Davis, who was a back in the early 2000s, who was a first round wow. pick in the Chargers. I'm not saying he's as good as Sammy, I'm saying he's probably the best corner I've seen here since then. Well, then they've had some good defensive backs, and, and that I'm, I'm on the final question he's getting the attention. Um, 
Scorton's getting a lot of attention as the pass rush has yeah. finally started to to break the way we thought it would. Um, everybody knows about Shamar Turner. G- give me a, a guy or two that maybe deserve a little more attention. I guess Torrey York would be a, a guy, obviously. Yeah. But I mean, it feels it feels like they got a lot of dudes back there. Well, uh, you know, the guy that the coaches are just raving about, and that you've never heard of. I guarantee you've never heard of Albert Regis. Um, and Albert was a backup defensive lineman last year. And, um, you know, he's one of those guys that you always say, okay, well, you know, you can put Albert in, um, uh, and we're play in place of, you know, McKinley Jackson, right? McKinley's on into the NFL, but Hey, he needs a breather. Let's let Albert play a few plays. And he, they're all, Albert has taken his game to another level. We didn't think he could play. He's, he even had a sack last week, which again you don't expect that from. He's a interior six one, about two hundred and ninety pound interior lineman, but he moves pretty well. He's just playing great football. So, so much of the attention, rightly so, is on Nick Scorton and Shamar Stewart, who's having a really good year as a, as the opposite defensive end. Of course, Shamar Turner was a, a defensive end that had six sacks last year, and they moved him inside to tackle. So that's where all the attention's going. But Albert has been the guy that they're just raving about the play. He's a, played so well that we thought, I thought DJ Hicks, who was a five-star prospect in the 2024 recruiting class, I thought he was going to be the starter uh, as the, four, the, the, the fourth guy in the, in the um, defensive line. And Albert Regis has been the guy that's just taken that position and they can't get him out of there. I mean, he's so uh, mobile. And so reliable. Now they, they had a punt blocked uh, against uh, who blocked that punt? Was it Bowling Green? Somebody blocked a punt on them. I think it was Bowling Green blocked a punt on them. And they didn't like what they were getting there. So they take big old Albert and he's, you know, I don't know what y'all call him up there. We call him the up back, you know, the guy that's protecting yeah. the permit. So they got him uh, a big old cor- uh, tackle out there playing wow. a position that's usually you got a fullback or somebody like that. So uh, Albert Regis, number 17, if you're watching A&M anytime, yeah, you're going to focus on 11 because that's Scorton and five, uh, which is Turner, and uh, and four, which is Shamar Stewart. You can't have too many Shamars, but <laughs> look for number 17 because, you know, that, that kid's playing some good football. Yeah, I'm sure running into a 310-pound up back is, is a lot of fun if you're trying to block a punt. But uh, speaking of fun, I think you got a lot of fun ahead for AM this season. I think they've got a chance uh, to, to be favored in every game until the Texas game, which is something we we talked about before the season. I think, um, yeah, I, I think AM suddenly, um, I'm not going to say wasn't a factor in, in the college football playoff race, but with some, some other teams getting – Getting a loss last week, I think they, they seem to be more prominently in the conversation they were a week ago, and I'm, I'm really looking forward to see where this goes. Well, we are too. You know, I think they're going to be favored probably at Mississippi State, but never take anything for granted. Start voting. Then yeah. LSU's going to come to town, and Aggies hate LSU, and LSU hates A&M. Uh, probably your second yeah. most – most despised opponent, right? Uh, yeah. Now there's a big gap between second and first in that thing, but uh, and then you know you got to go to South Carolina. They're playing good football, and you still have to go to Auburn. So uh, you don't take anything for granted. But yeah, I think the way the way they beat uh, Missouri, and then the way their schedule looked better because look, uh, uh, Vanderbilt beating Alabama. And Missouri having beaten Vanderbilt, that just makes Anything you look a little possible. better. And then Arkansas yeah. beating Tennessee makes that win over Arkansas look better. So you look at I, I think uh AM turned some heads this week. Uh but you know, there's still work to be done. And if there's ever if there's a program anywhere in the country that should know not to take anything for granted. It's a and Look, I was at the Rose Bowl watching A&M with a 34-point lead with 17 minutes to go and lost. So I don't take anything for granted, but there are definitely some possibilities and maybe even now some probabilities. Olin, thanks so much for joining us today. I know Tex Ags is just a behemoth of a media operation. Tell folks what you guys have got coming up and, and where they can find it. Well, you can find us at, at uh, texags.com. That's a, an abbreviated version of Texas Aggies, just texags.com. Hey, we got 
we got podcasts, we've got radio, we've got uh, the written word, uh, everything you want to know about Texas A&M football or Texas A&M sports in general. Uh, we like to think that we are the preeminent outlet for all things A&M sports. So if you're interested in Aggies, give us a look. Well, I think I think you are all that and more. Olin, thanks for joining us. Uh, we'll we'll check in with you again. I'm I'm positive a couple more times this season, as we right. see where this this goes down in in College Station. Well, thank you so much for having me. Like I tell everybody when I'm on one of these things, just remember that America starts with a and N. I love it. I've never heard that. I don't know how I've never heard that, but I I think that's going to stick. Uh, anyway, all right, for Olin Buchanan and Chase Robinson, thanks, I'm Chris Lee. We're, thanks, we're Southeastern 16. Thanks for watching. We'll see you again soon.